on Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell and his guest, Mel Waters, and the story of Mel's Hole, the bottomless pit in Washington State. I've got Mel on the line. Mel's the guy with the never-ending hole. Right now, I'm in a little town called Ellensburg. Oh, I know Ellensburg. Oh, you got you, you really think you've got 80,000? Yeah, yeah, I, I uh, get uh, line in 5,000 yard spools. I have gone through that many. As usual, I brought the dogs with me. Uh, they wouldn't go anywhere near the damn thing. And if I try to bring them there on a leash, they'll just dig their feet and they do not want to go anywhere near the hole. The so one guy claims that he threw his uh, departed canine down into the hole. Oh, really? And uh, he swears the, the dog actually came back to him. And uh, he was really. Like, but before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. Without you guys, we would not be able to do what we do. If you would like to join our producer, our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on Mystery Monday... We are going to be talking about Mel's Hole. Now, as you just heard at the opening of this video, a call came in on February 21st of 1997 to the program Coast to Coast AM, which was run by Art Bell at that time. Most of the people on this channel are very, very familiar with Coast to Coast as it was one of the original outlets for alternative media and conspiracies. This caller identified himself as Mel Waters. Now, people would go on to figure out that this was a pseudonym, that this was not his real name, as no Mel Waters seems to exist in the records for buying and purchasing land in Ellensburg, Washington. Ellensburg, Washington is a relatively small town that is located in, basically in the middle of the state of Washington. It's at the base of the Cascade Mountains, and it is the home of Central Washington University. According to the story that Mel Waters would go on to tell Art Bell was that in 1933, this Mel Waters and his wife bought property in Ellensburg, Washington. Once they bought the property, they then discovered that there was a mysterious hole in the ground. Now, allegedly, this hole was not a new discovery. According to many of the Native Americans, this hole had been around for a very, very long time. Legend states that the Yakima Indians had used this hole for many, many purposes, one of which, according to some people, was a dumping ground. They would literally go there to dump old stuff that they didn't need anymore. And as you heard from the opening, there was a story where a man took his dearly departed dog and put it into the hole only to have the dog return to him later alive. Needless to say, there were so many supernatural stories regarding this particular hole. Some people say that a black beam shoots out from the hole from time to time, almost like a flashlight. Why other people say that the hole is often guarded by a lamb. Upon discovering this hole in his property, this Mel Waters would go on to explore this hole, try to figure out how deep it was. According to his own story that he would later tell to Art Bell on Coast to Coast AM, he took fishing wire and weights to see how far down the hole actually went. According to Mel Waters, the fishing wire went down at least 80,000 feet. And still, it did not hit the bottom. This is roughly 15 miles. And if this is true, this means that Mel's hole is one of the deepest holes on our planet that we know of. Now, after Mel Waters appeared on Coast to Coast AM, things got really interesting. In 1997, after going public with this phenomenon on his land, 
Two men allegedly dressed in black showed up at his property. They claimed that there had been an airplane crash on his property, his big, vast property, and therefore he could not move around on his property. They told him if he went anywhere on his property, he would be subject to potential arrest. Around this time, it is alleged that the United States government offered to lease the land from Mel Waters, and upon leasing it from him, they basically took ownership of the land. They told Mel Waters that he himself needed to leave the United States. They would support him anywhere he wanted to go. So at this point, it is said that Mel Waters decided to go to Australia. On top of this, it is alleged that Mel Waters received about $250,000 a month. Yes, you heard me right, a month to stay in Australia. But around the year 2000, it is said that Mel Waters was homesick, and so he decided to return to the United States. This, of course, was part of the agreement not to be in the United States. So upon severing this agreement, it is said that he got into a bit of a confrontation with a uh, government authority. And the story goes that he ended up in San Francisco, where he was missing about two weeks worth of memories. Now, Five, ten years ago, I would have just scuffed at this as just some conspiracy theory. However, knowing what we know now, there might be some truth to this story. Nonetheless, after Mel Waters returned back to the United States, it is said that he did go back on Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell in 2000 and again in 2002. After the United States government allegedly took over this piece of property and this mysterious hole, it is said that no one can find it anymore. Now, this is particularly strange because, again, the Native Americans in the area already knew about the hole. But not only did the Native Americans already know about the hole, but it seems that locals were also very familiar with this phenomenal hole, this never-ending hole in their town. Kind of like some weird town secret that they didn't really talk about until Mel Waters put it publicly out on Coast to Coast AM. One of the people that was very supportive of Mel Waters' story was a man named Red Elk. Now, Red Elk is a Native American shaman who claims he saw the hole when he was a child. And he also claimed that at the bottom of the hole, there lived lizard people, Draco. Perhaps maybe this being an entrance to Agartha, another story that we have covered extensively on this channel, the Hollow Earth. He goes on to say that these beings that live at the base of this hole are not here for humanity's good, but in fact are enemies to the human people. They want to enslave us, use us. And in 2012, he was interviewed regarding this. There are people down there, alien people to us, that were here even before man. They cannot stand our weather. They can't stand the sunlight or the cold. Their planet they come from is a desert planet, so they live underground. And in this time and age, there's going to be, there's, there's going to be some real interaction. And they want to control us as slaves, as food, as sex items. Doesn't matter if they're male and you are either, I guarantee you. Another group of people in Washington who have taken an interest in Mel's Hall is the Seattle Museum of Mysteries. They have run multiple expeditions to, again, try to find this hole, as it seems now that is the biggest problem people have, is actually locating where this hole is in Ellensburg, Washington. Many people who believe the hole does exist, but perhaps isn't as mysterious as they make it out to be, believe the hole might actually be what we call a blowhole coming from Mount Rainier. However, a man named Jack Powell, who is a geologist for the State Department of Natural Resources, says that none of this is even possible. It's not possible for this hole to be a blowhole, nor is it possible for this hole to basically be a bottomless pit to another world. He claims that the way that the land is structured, if this hole did exist at over 80,000 feet deep, the hole would basically, or the earth would basically fall in on itself. So therefore, not possible. However, I think most of you think how I think that I just poo-poo anything coming from the government or the state as being basically fiction. 
Now, within this one mystery, we have multiple mysteries. First of all, this idea of this hole being a bottomless pit, possibly into an underworld of less desirable beings, reminds me a lot of a story we covered a while ago about Fusca Castle in the Czech Republic, a castle that was built over another bottomless pit that basically was called the Gates to Hell. If you missed that episode that I did a while ago, I will place a link in the description box below. But with that being said, this idea of this bottomless pit, this nefarious bottomless pit, is not something that is odd on our planet. We also talked about a possibility of some type of a portal with the Nahani up in Canada, which isn't that far from this location in Washington. So this in itself is not some new phenomenon. The other mystery we have with this story is the fact that no one can find it anymore. That all these natives and these locals that were used to this hole, who knew where it was, now seems to vanish. Where, where did it go? Is it being cloaked right now? Is it being hidden? Are people being disoriented in their own backyard? I believe that the powers that be, the bad guys that is, do have the ability to cloak certain land. I myself, as I've said multiple times, am actually very suspicious about how far we actually are in proximity to each other as far as our countries. Part of me feels like that in some weird gut feeling that we might actually be closer to each other than we know. And perhaps there is some suspension in time that we're not totally aware of that's happening when we get on an airplane or on a boat to travel to another continent. But I think the most telling, telling sign that something is happening in this area is the fact that once Mel Waters went public with this story, everything changed. The government got involved. All right, you guys, I hope that you all had a wonderful Easter weekend. Please leave me your opinions and your comments down in the comment section below. Of course, I will be doing a follow-up with our friend Stephanie to see if we can figure out what the tarot cards have to say about Mel's hole in Washington State.